very good evening to everyone. So I am really, really excited to be with you today, this evening. But today I'm going to be covering some really new material, some very practical uh, information and tips about you know how you can uh, look at machine vision in a in a different perspective from an implementation and uh, perspective which aligns with you know. Um, uh, digital transformation as well as you know how you can break down complex things all right so with that i'm gonna get started right away and uh, um we um I'll, I'll do that with you know uh, by sharing my screen here in a second i hope everyone can see my screen all right perfect so what are we going to talk about today? And firstly, let me introduce myself and my, my company. I, I usually have a slide. Um, I'm Raghava. I'm the CEO of Qualitas Technologies. Qualitas Technologies is a company that uh, specializes in machine vision and artificial intelligence to automate visual inspection tasks in manufacturing. So we've been doing this for about 12 years. We've done software development, system integration, and more recently, we've launched our own product, which is in three continents today. And we are, we just recently launched, you know, the product called Eagle Eye, the Qualitas Eagle Eye, the first deep learning and AI based end-to-end uh, -end platform using web and edge. It's a hybrid solution. Um, and we have quite a bit of experience with machine vision, especially with when it comes to manufacturing. So I'm going to be talking about, you know, a small aspect of this, which is the role of machine vision in digital transformation. But this subject by itself is a very vast and deep subject. And, you know, I can talk about days, you know, and days and, and not have enough material to cover everything. Right. So, um, yeah, just uh, I, I have a master's in computer science and AI. I've been, I've worked with many companies in the software industry. Before starting Qualitas, I was at Microsoft Corporation in, in, in Redmond, Washington, USA. And I was uh, leading, um, you know, product teams which used AI and machine vision quite extensively. So I have a little bit of experience. So that's, and so today, you know, in the webinar, we're gonna cover you know, the, four, the three main topics. And we're gonna start off with a little bit of basics in terms of what's um, machine vision and, you know, the benefits of machine vision, why you should be interested and what's, you know, what's uh, the, the benefits for you in a manufacturing environment. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what are the components of machine vision? So in order to understand how this can benefit you and how you can actually implement this in your assembly line, we got to talk about um, what is the, uh, the different parts of a machine vision system and understanding the different parts is actually the key to us. We're going to talk about next, which is how do we um, use machine vision as a digital transformation tool? We've heard about digital transformation, industry 4.0, AI, deep learning. Now, there's a lot of excitement around the space and machine vision has a huge contributing factor to play in this. And we're gonna talk about how you can use machine vision to make some really massive transformations within your automation and transform some of the um, key result areas within um, your manufacturing process. And the lastly is to talk about, you know, how, how you can break down the process of implementing machine vision in a practical way so that you can take small steps towards your digital transformation journey. Because transformation is a journey, it's not a project. It's really, you know, how do you change your organization or how do you um, in, in, include technology into every aspect of your organization? And so we're going to talk about how you can break this down in the context of machine vision. So um, now before I get started, I'd like to just know a little bit about, you know, the audience right now. So we've got quite a few, almost 100, and I think more are joining. So we had 
you know, uh, a couple of hundred registrants. So, you know, I, th I think we'll see a hundred plus attendees here. So before we get started, can you just type out your name and organization in your chat window, please? So, you know, which your, not, not your name probably because I have it, just your organization where you are and perhaps your role. And that would be, you know, give me some context. And while we do that, can we also bring up the first poll, which, um, you know, I'd, I'd also like to know a little bit about yourself, whether you're from manufacturing, whether you're from a system integration background, you're from academics. So if you could just bring up that poll and, and um, I would love to take a quick minute to answer that. Okay, so you should see the poll right in your, in your screen. So if you could. Okay, so we have from software, we have battery manufacturing, academics, um, Amazon, there is energy, cements, fantastic. Battery manufacturing, software, Cosmos, that's again. So quite a bit of diversity here. So all across manufacturing, industrial automation, consulting, fantastic. All right. So, you know, the, the poll looks like 40%, a third of you are from manufacturing, more than a third of you, nearly half are from manufacturing. A couple from system integration. Uh, the next is from Ac academia, academics and consultancy and others. Okay, so quite a few others. So maybe we haven't taken all that, okay. So we got about 49, 50, all right. Great, great, okay. So thank you so much. So it looks like this, there's quite a bit of manufacturing in the audience. So I'm just sharing the results so you can see the survey. So I don't know who else is um, you know, as part of the audience. All right, so now, so let's moving on now. Typical target audiences, as we saw, is manufacturing companies, people from manufacturing. They could be, you know, all kinds of manufacturing, discrete or discrete process. Um, and and the interest that people come in from either they're in uh, some interest in digital transformation, process automation, improvements, etc., in manufacturing. And then you have um, the automation providers and those are the machine builders, system integrators, et cetera, who, who use technology like machine vision in their uh, solution lines. So today <clears throat> we've seen system integrators, machine builders, providers of automation technologies have huge, gained huge comp competitive advantage. So they've you know, uh, taken technologies and really upgraded their offering and st they've stood out from the competition. And so if, if you're a machine builder, system integrator, Thank you for joining. I think you're going to get a, a massive advantage in using technology like AI and machine vision in your automation. It's not that difficult. It's it'll there's a lot of benefits to it, and it'll help you stand out in within amongst your competition and help you give a lot of value to your customers. So, having said that, I uh, um, that's there's also students and consultants which I see. So before I talk about, you know, what is machine vision or automation, let's look at what is the need for automation. Like one of, there's a lot of metrics that sort of define um, a KPI within a manufacturing uh, uh, company. And one very interesting statistics is the average revenue per employee. So in other words, if you're a company that does hundred crores, and you have a hundred people in your organization. That means that average revenue per employee is one crore per employee, right? And so why is this metric very important? Is human capital, human labor is actually becoming a premium, right? And so, and it's also not just becoming a premium, it's also becoming, uh, um, a scarce commodity. 
Now, take this pandemic for an example. Now, just getting access to human labor, it's not, you can't just, you know, increase, get um, labor by throwing money at the problem. You know, there's safety issues. The pandemic just prevents us from having and um, oh, having a manual workforce sitting close to each other and doing things, right? Now, there's also the limitations of human um, operators and limitations of human skills in automation. There is, you know, you have to train them. And when you train them, you know, they're, they're, they're not designed or they're not um, made for repetitive tasks, right? So there's a lot of, uh, you know, factors contributing or, you know, having human uh, operators in your manufacturing line be a limiting factor for your growth. So, and if you look at the industry, manufacturing kind of stands out as the, really the last in the list of 10 done by a survey and done by a study actually. Um, the first one is energy that has the highest revenue per employee, but manufacturing is the last one. So, so there's a huge need for automation, right? So that's one of the reasons in addition to a lot of other things, right? Now, if you look at automation, what are the key areas? What, where is manual labor or manual operators primarily used in manufacturing, right? They're really being used in two different areas. One is their material handling, they're lifting things, they're using the hands and the legs, you're using them for their motor skills, right? Loading, unloading, machine tending. So you have a CNC machine or you have some kind of a, um, a process that uses a machine. So operating that machine, machine tending, um, and then assembling, putting things together, right? So these are the one aspect of um, using humans in manufacturing, in your process, right? Um, I'm not talking about, you know, the people who are in corporate, who are doing design, who are doing sort of, you know, value added works, but I'm talking about in the production shop floor. The second is inspection, right? There's a huge amount of inspection that's being done by manual. Now it could be a combination. People may be doing both. They may be assembling something and inspecting. So one person could be doing both but it's primarily one of these two tasks, right? So agree or disagree, right? Type it out in your chat window if, um, you know, what you, what you think. Is there any other aspect of, um, uh, operator that happens, right? So now, so when you talk about the need for operation and then you say where, the need for automation, and then you see where is your human labor capital deployed? It's usually in one of these things. So what does that mean? So basically it means that when you're handling, tending assembly, your automation solution is robotics and assembly automation. Yes or no, right? So that would be the primary solution to automate things in the first bucket. In the second bucket, the solution for inspection is machine vision, right? Now, that basically the human eyes and the brains, right? So if the handling, tending assembly is replacing the eyes and robotics is replacing the hands of operators, the eyes and the brains are being replaced by machine vision technology, right? So there's a strong case for deploying both these in automation, right? Now, we all know about robotics, cobots, there's a lot of innovation that's happening. But why isn't machine vision actually used as prominently as it should be when there's such a big need? And the main reason is that the technology is a limiting factor. But with technology that comes, you know, that has come more recently like AI and deep learning, it's making it a lot easier for uh, automation to happen. All right. So, which brings me to what is machine vision, right? So we talked about machine vision as the solution for inspection, but what is machine vision? So machine vision is the process of acquiring digital images, right? So this is the keyword, digital images and computing a result. 
So it's like a photo eye. You have a camera, it takes an image, and then from that image, it computes a re result. Computer result to automate some industrial process, right? So that is actually machine vision, the definition of machine vision. And so if you are able to automate the process accurately, efficiently, you can you know, replace that inspection operation, which we talked about in the previous slide with this technology and think about how powerful that can be for you, right? So imagine you've now actually automated a very critical process, increased speed, increased consistency, now removed the need for a very complex operation that's being done by a human, which a human isn't designed for. A human isn't designed for repetitive tasks. You know, it's, you, you give my six-year-old, you know, I ask him to do something three times and he's already bored, right? So imagine having laborers in your assembly line doing things in hundreds and hundreds of times, doing the same thing. It, your mind, is going to run into fatigue. They're not designed for such operations. You are going to get into fatigue. It's just a matter of time. So it's just a matter of time. If you need to stay competitive, you need to automate. You need to reduce dependence on human people. You need to employ machine in your assembly line. It's just a matter of time, right? So are you going to do it today or are you going to do it tomorrow? You have to do it. And the sooner you do it, the more competitive you're going to be, right? But how? The question is how. Okay, so in other words, this is a picture. So you're going from this to something like this, right? That's machine vision. So now we talked about why the benefits, right? So I, I, I mentioned a little bit before. The main benefits is that it's machine vision is easy to integrate. It's a non-contact technology. So it's very easy to take a camera and then put it anywhere in your process. You don't need to touch the object. You don't need to move the object. The camera can just take a picture just like a human would be looking at it from a distance and then taking a decision or a judgment call. And so because of this easy to use technology, it becomes easy to integrate technology. It's actually easy to integrate and deploy. Secondly, consistency. It's not subjective in decision-making. If it's wrong, it's wrong all the time. If it's right, it's right all the time, right? It's software, it's not moody. Now, with advanced technologies that are coming up today, it's proven that it's even more accurate. You give two inspection tasks to a human and you give the same task to a deep learning powered computer system. It's proven that with the right training, the system, the computer system can actually outperform even in terms of accuracy compared to a human. And of course, it's faster, the speed. And lastly, you it comes with additional benefits like traceability. Now, you're working on digital images. Now, tomorrow, you can have this archive of all these images of inspection. So tomorrow, you can review it for analysis. You could do root cause analysis. Why did so many defects come into my production line? You could also do things like, um, you know, for traceability. So tomorrow your client complains, you know, oh, I saw a defect. You were, you know, it, it, it's probably not been inspected. You can always, you know, retrieve those archive images and show proof and, and have to complete traceability with ca cameras and images to show that this inspection happened. And this is how the image looked like at the time of inspection. So there's a tremendous number of benefits. So there's, you know, it's, but how do you get started, right? So that's the question. So, you know, uh, there's, there's a number of applications, object detection, measurement, flaw detection, anything a human can do, like print effect identification, which is, you know, reading of barcodes, uh, OCR, which is optical character recognition, that's reading uh, uh, characters, uh, examples are reading uh, labels on packaging, maybe on, uh, you know, uh, on also on like vehicle identification, number uh, etched on automotive parts, um, uh, classification, locating. Locating is a common example for you know, robotic guidance. So I have a number of webinars in the previous section talks about the details about each application. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that because 
Um, that's covered in previous webinar. And I, I want to spend some time on some new content, some new topics that could be more interesting. So if you want to see details about what is object identification, what is a measurement, how, how do you differentiate between the two, then I would encourage you to go look at some of my previous webinars and then you can see you know, the details about examples of, of, of these applications, right? So, you know, um, for those of you who have not seen machine vision in action, so I, let's, let's, this, this is probably a good time to do the second poll, right? So I'd like to understand, you know, what is your familiarity with machine vision, right? So can we bring up the second poll, please? And um, uh, can you, can you answer, um, you know, the question about what is your familiarity with uh, machine vision, right? So. Let's bring up the yeah okay so, so what's it what is your familiarity with machine vision so it's you know have have you used machine vision before have you seen but not used right you've seen it in action either as a video you've heard about it but you haven't seen not used it right so someone has told you, okay, there's something called machine vision. You've heard about it, but never seen it. So, you know, where, where do you lie, right? And then, you know, it could be, you're absolutely clueless. I haven't even heard about this technology, right? What, what the hell is machine vision? And so hopefully, you know, that part of it should now be clear for those of you in, in the last category of no idea. I hope I've given you some examples and I show you some more videos and to, to, uh, explain that. Okay, so new to vision, have heard of it, but not told. So Ravindra says bottles contain a label in pharma. And uh, yes, so okay. All right, let me end this and then share this also. If you are curious what it is, yes, have used. So the majority of you have actually used machine vision. So about 19, uh, th uh, more than a third of you who, were, who have answered. So, um, okay, that's that's really cool. That's exciting to hear. So uh, we, we're gonna have an interesting conversation um, about this. <clears throat> okay, moving on. So let me, you know, sh um, play a short video. Right about different applications of machine vision, and so here you know there is basically an operator is placing something on an assembly line. There's a camera and it's taking uh, a picture, and then it's doing a counting. So this is a counting of piston rings, right? So this is as basic as it can get. It can be a stationary object. You place something on the um, op, uh, on this rod, which is the holder. Is a bunch of piston rings, and then you're, you know, counting the number of rings that have been placed. One example of machine vision. Another example. This is measurement, right? So you have this rubber beading that's extruding from this extruder, and you have these multiple beadings which are coming on a conveyor. Now you want to measure the thickness of that conveyor. So what happens is there's a camera basically which um, on the top, and from that top view, it's measuring the thickness. Okay, here's another example where you do, you know, optical character recognition. So here, this is the camera, you can see the light and the camera. Now a robot is presenting a part to, in front of the camera and it's presenting it. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's taking a picture and then from the picture, it's reading a set of characters. So optical character recognition, right? That's another example of, um, uh, robot integrated machine vision. So instead of a human picking things up and reading it, it's automating it using the use of robots and cameras. Okay. So another example. So this is checking a 360 degrees for any defects. This is a breaking piston and you want to check whether there's any um, 
defects on the uh, surface of the piston. Another example is an automotive. So you have automotive cars, some painting operation that's happened, and then you want to check the quality of the paint, whether it's been done uniformly. So, so cameras from the side and bottom to check whether painting has been done correctly. Here, it's this is an engine cylinder, right? The cylinder of an engine, the three three cylinder engine, and this is for measurement. So, it's, the camera is moving; it's taking a very high resolution picture and doing measurement on top of it, right? This is for you know the cameras that are checking the assembly. So assembly of refrigerators. So to check whether all the components within the refrigerator have been placed, like the shelf, these, this ice cube tray, these cabinets, right? It's checking and making sure that they're all present. So these are some examples of how you can deploy machine vision in your life. So there's hundreds and hundreds of different examples. Uh, these are just a small fraction of it, right? So I hope this has given some idea about what machine vision does what is the advantage this technology is getting massive popularity all across the globe especially in advanced manufacturing and it's just a matter of time before in india it's going to be used heavily everywhere right and so uh, so what I'm, what i'm going to do is before i move to the next uh, uh, part of my presentation which talks about the different parts i want to um, answer any questions. Any questions that I could answer from the audience, please type it out in the chat window. You can put it in your Q&A, right? So um, one is, um, can we get a webinar video? Yes, we will get, we'll be sharing a video of the recording. And uh, so CAD CAM, automotive mechanical aerospace, Okay, it's not a question, I guess, but so agriculture drone uses 12 volt battery DC. That's probably not a question, but any questions in the chat window? Let me check. What is the difference between computer vision and machine vision? Okay, so um, good question. So com computer, they're, they're, they're the same. It's a term terminology difference, right? So with uh, computer vision is more the um, it's used in terminology of academics and research. That's how computer vision got formed. So machine vision is more the application of computer vision in industrial automation in industries, right? That's what machine vision is. So when you have um, uh, it's more application, computer vision is more, more the science, I would say, right? Now can we check hot farming? Yes. You know, so I get this question a lot. Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we check, you know, this material? Can we check this steel grade? Can we check uh, reading of something? Now, I'll tell you a very, um, an answer which will probably be uh, the answer for all those questions. The question is, if a human can do it, if a human can look at something and take a decision and do it, yes, you can use machine vision. That's that's a simple answer, right? So if you're looking for defects using some, you know, um, uh, which which is being done by humans, um, then definitely machine vision can be used to automate this process. Now, that is the uh, lowest bar. Now, you can do much more advanced things. There is things which you can see, which humans also cannot see, like red hot, if, it, if you're talking about hot farming, we, we have things like hyperspectral imaging today, infrared imaging. So even humans cannot see these things, but you can deploy machine vision systems that can uh, see uh, these things beyond the visible spectrum. So there is a ton of things you could do within uh, machine vision, um, you know, using machine vision technologies. I'm, I'm going to talk about the different parts of machine vision, and then you'll see that you'll, you'll start to see the difference between you know uh, some of these applications. So, what's the difference between C, uh, CMM and machine vision? So, CMM is you know coordinate measurement machine, right? So that's so it uses a touch probe which goes and measures. So it's a it's a contact based 
technology. Machine vision is more a non-contact based technology. Now, can you replace a CMM with machine vision? Not really, right? You have some, um, what do you call, um, measurement systems using cameras, but uh, they're not as accurate as these probe based systems, right? So um, they're two different things. Uh, machine vision is inherently non-contact, CMMs are, um, you know, contact based. So any other questions? How do you define role of industrial supplier in machine vision? How do you define the role of the industrial supplier? Okay, I'm gonna talk about some of that today. So when we talk about us using, working with vendors to solve your application, there's really different parts. You gotta uh, think, if the, the best way to do this is to break down the different parts of your solution. And there's different parts of the machine vision system that we have. And you got to, you know, the best way to do this is get specialized suppliers for each of these parts. The mistake that we often do is we want one supplier to do everything and you'll never get that one supplier and you'll never move forward. So the, the what you need to do is you got to educate yourself enough to know what are the different parts of the technology, what is the base technology, and then break down the complexity and then go source different vendors for different, you know, um, technology expertise and and it's only starts with you educating yourself and then working with specialized vendors for this right um, so next question is machine vision um, what machine vision of sees any defect in process what will be the step of machine vision uh, Sanjay I'm not sure I understand your question so complete quality checking process of any manufacturing process we can do with machine vision. Yes. So not quality checking, I would say visual quality checking, right? So there are functional quality tests, which don't have a visual, you know, characteristic. And so machine vision only does visual quality. So how can machine vision be used for explaining automation process in any auto machine? That is how the machine works. Uh, Asha, they're not sure I... I have an example for you explaining automation process because usually it's you know not used for explaining something it's used for inspecting something so that may not be the right application of machine vision so okay so i hope you know this gave you it it covered for those of you who are new to machine vision had no idea i hope now you have some idea so at least you've heard but you you you've not you know you can now look at exploring this a little bit more to see how this can be applicable in your industry. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so let's talk about the parts of a machine vision system, right? Now, what are the different parts of a machine vision? And there's really three parts of a machine vision system and they're all actually very, very different in technology, expertise and uh, the approach to how you build each of the different parts. Now, why am I breaking this down? Why is this important? Is that this is not theory, guys, this is not theory, right? This is actually very important in practical use of how you are going to solve a machine vision problem in your assembly line. Now, the reason why this is very practically relevant is that each of these has uh, their sort of interdependent. In other words, for a machine vision solution to work, you need to have the right material handling, you need to have the right image acquisition, and you need to have the right image processing. But you can actually build these differently with different vendors and still get a fantastic solution that works. Now, and this is probably uh, the best way that you can go about um, solving your machine vision uh, solution. And I'll explain why. Oftentimes the mistake that we do is we expect um, a solution, a complete turnkey solutions having all of these in place. Because you say, you know, oh, I don't know about machine vision. I don't know this technology. I'm not the expert. I want the vendor to come and do everything for us. And that's the wrong way to approach this. You need to break this down and then 
source an expert for material handling, source an expert for image acquisition and image processing. Maybe the same guy will do both, doesn't matter. But even if it's different, it's okay, right? And let's sort of talk about each, each part. First, let's talk about material handling automation, right? So what is material handling automation and why is it important? So material handling automation, in this case, there's two uh, you know, stages in which you can do this material handling is before this inspection of machine vision and after the inspection of machine vision, right? So it's called pre-process material handling and then it's post-process material handling, right? Um, now, what is pre-process material handling? Pre-process material handling is what physical material or camera automation is required for capturing an image, right? Now, just because you have some products that you want to inspect, you can't just bring a camera and then say, okay, now it'll magically do the inspection. No, right? It actually has to present the part and, and even in that part, it needs to present the right surface of the part to the camera of, you know, where you want to do the inspection. So think of it like a human. So if I'm inspecting, let's say, you know, uh, let's look at this part, right? So this is, you know, a, a plug. Now I want to inspect all aspects. Now, what do I have to do? If I have to see, I have to turn this around. I have to see, you know, are these three present? Then I have to check, are these pins present? See, what am I doing? I'm rotating this, right? I'm rotating and checking. Now it's the same thing. So just like the camera, the off, you know, that, that is, uh, shooting this uh, webinar it needs to see this this the same way the machine vision camera also needs to see this so if i present it like this obviously it's not going to be able to see this part so now you need to have two cameras or maybe you know one camera from which inspects this the other camera which looks at this plug right so now you got to handle this material either you have to rotate the part and show it to a camera or you have to have two cameras and then, you know, obviously you're doing mass production. So you have to show one part, then the next part comes, then the next part comes. So all this is the pre-process material handling to ensure that you are orienting the part and enabling the camera to capture every part, you know, individually to do the inspection, right? Now, if we look at, you know, let's take as an example, right? Now let's take an example of capsule inspection. You're inspecting these capsules, you know, the medical and the, um, the, the drug industry is quite uh, popular these days because of, uh, you know, the vaccinations, everyone you know, is, is, is talking about uh, uh, medicine. So let's, I thought, you know, we'll use a medical pharmaceutical example. Now, let's assume you have to do this defect identification. Now, here's an example of a defect. This capsule is there. It needs to check these kind of dents. It needs to check if you know the capsule has been uh, assembled correctly, right? There are two parts to it. It puts a powder, the the, the, the material, the uh, chemical, which is the drug, and then it seals the two with two caps, right? That's capsule. Now this it, it and it needs to be inspected in all 360 degrees, right? It's you know this is one angle. It needs to be maybe this angle. It needs to look at it from the other angle. So there's different angles. So how does, you know, if you were to do it manually, how would you do this manually, right? So um, it would look like something, you know, like this, you'd be picking up the material, you'd be uh, looking at these one by one. Uh, and so it's, it's bulk inspection that's happening. Now, obviously manual inspection is slow and it's not going to be, um, you know, done as precisely um, uh, as, as one would want. Now, let's say you want to automate this. Now, you're not ready for a, a deploying a camera and software yet, right? You need material handling to really make this whole machine vision effective, right? Why? Because if you look at, you know, um, now, if, if, if you look at, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, number of capsules inspected per hour, it's going to be very limited and it may not be accurate. So, so how do you, um, you know, make the material consistent? So let's take a few examples, right? Let's see, let's take, I'll give you one example now. Um, 
and and please type out your answer in your chat window what you observe now do you think this for the requirement that we had right so inspection of defects in capsules do you think this type of material handling will work right i'll play this video right so there is material handling it's pushing the capsules you know and it's exposing the tip right it's exposing the tip here these tips are exposed so let's say you have a camera looking at it from this angle the same angle as you can see this video right it should be able to identify the dents right will this work what do you think anybody on the chat it will damage the cap okay um yeah one aspect of it could be a uh, damaging the cap but let's assume it's 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 not going to damage the cap but it will will it will will it handle my requirements is it sufficient um uh, partially yes ram prasad says partially yes partially right because it's exposing only one aspect of the uh um of the, the capsule it's not the requirement is all 360 degrees but you know the the material is is being enclosed from two sides so you may be able to put a camera on the front as well as a camera on the uh back or on the top sorry here this is exposed as well as this is exposed but you know what about this side which is holding this right of the bottom it can't see this bottom right so obviously you can, you, it's not exposed to a camera so if you can't uh, you know see it you can't inspect it so this has some limitation this will not work right so let's take another example let me erase the how about this one what do you think about this you think this will work right so i think you get the picture right so even this will not work why because okay now you have the top side exposed and to some ex extent the sides but the bottom is not exposed right so obviously you can't inspect the bottom so you're only going to be doing you know about half of the inspection right so you can see right now this has nothing to do with cameras and ai and software it's basic common sense it's if you don't expose it to the camera you can't inspect it right and so um the material handling is really really critical in terms of ensuring your application requirements are fulfilled by this material handling system let's look at another example right let's look at this now here it's rotating you can't see it but it's actually rotating the caps as it's moving along the cylinder right so it's localized but it's also doing the rotating right you can see the rotation here so it's you know this basically rotates i think we had a are you guys still with me hello yeah so sorry we had a small network okay so glad you can hear me i'm just going to temporarily stop the video and continue it's going to take a minute for the video to come back on so here um so as you can see the you could you could tell that uh, the material handling in this particular case you know works right and why does that work 
it's because you're exposing all the aspects of all 360 degree aspects of the uh, surface, right? And it's again common sense. So the material handling is actually a very, very critical component to the, um, uh, the first step of machine vision. So I'll play that again and you know how to do that. So, you know, let's, the requirement was you have, um, is, you, is you have a 360 degree inspection where you're looking at it from the side, you're looking at Okay, sorry, I'm back. I had a slight outage. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, thank you. Apologize, a slight network outage. So I'll bring back the screen and let's start. Right. So we talked about, you know, the, the need for material handling and why an example of, you know, the capsule inspection, you know, how it's um, important. And so the, the two main requirements was you needed to isolate each capsule because you're doing this in bulk. So you need to isolate them, separate the two out. And then the second requirement was to be able to rotate to expose the entire surface to the camera in order to be able to handle your um, Okay. I think the video. Yeah. So in order to be able to handle the um, surface inspection. So now what is the second aspect? So we talked about, so pre-process automation, just to recap, what physical camera and material automation is required for image acquisition and rotation, right? Now, let me share the screen again. Yeah. So the next aspect of it is uh, image acquisition, right? 
Now, once you've localized is you, you need to be able to capture the image to be able to identify, um, you know, image, right? Without the, uh, image itself, you can't do any processing on it. Now, so what are the different components of image acquisition? And there's three main, four main components, the trigger, the camera, the optics and the illumination. Now, again, these are some, um, I've covered these in detail with my previous webinar. And, you know, uh, I'm not gonna go into this right now, but let's talk about these in maybe at a high level, right? So um, the first is about the trigger mechanism, which is nothing but what is the mechanism that signals the camera to acquire an image. So let's go back to the capsule example. So let's say you have a camera that's looking at it from the top as the capsule moves to the side, right? Now, so as soon as the camera comes in front of, the, the uh, capsule comes in front of the camera, you need to signal to the camera to take an image. And that's a trigger. Right? So there's either a PLC or a sensor or some kind of you know, signal that takes the picture. And, uh, and that's really the trigger mechanism. So you know, just look at a few examples, a previous example of examples, uh, the videos that I had. Third, you know, there's a manual trigger. So there's a guy who's pressing the button right, and taking that picture. And here there's a conveyor. And here you're actually using um, an encoder. And here the robot presents it to the camera and then the robot controller is giving a trigger to the camera. It's like a PLC trigger, the robot controller. Right? Here you have sensors. So the camera is on the side. As soon as the car body comes in front of the sensor, uh, the sensor comes in front of the car body, it triggers the camera to take a picture, right? So it takes an image and then does the processing. Here you have a linear encoder. So as it's moving, it's taking, it's triggering the camera to take every line. So it stitches the lines. It's called a line scan image acquisition. So there's a linear encoder that's triggering the camera. And in this particular example, you have a photoelectric sensor that's triggering when the body of the refrigerator comes in front of the camera as well, right? So there's different trigger mechanisms, you know, you saw from manual to encoders to sensors. So that's, you know, simple electronics, not too, you know, challenging. Uh, uh, but that's the first aspect of image acquisition. You have to do the signal that's the trigger. And then there's a camera. Now, even in the camera, there's a number of different aspects of camera to select the right camera for image acquisition. You have the camera type, in terms of you know what is the image format 2D 3D and then you have the uh, image acquisition type which is area scan versus line scan. So again, all these I am going to be doing a separate webinar on. In fact, the next webinar I'm going to be doing is image acquisition fundamentals. And I'm going to go deep into just what is the science and the technology behind how you can acquire images in an industrial environment. So a lot of times I see, you know, people um, struggling with this because without the right image capture, you can't do the processing. So this is a very important aspect. And I'm going to be doing a separate webinar on this. So stay tuned and sign up for that. You'll, you'll see, um, you know, uh, some information about it uh, coming in your emails. Okay. Um, the other, uh, part of this is the interface. So this is the interface is basically the connection between the camera and the, um, the PC that's receiving those images. The resolution, of course, I think this is the most common one, megapixels, three megapixels, five, 10 megapixels, 100 megapixels, that's the resolution. Frame rate is speed, how many images per second, right? That's 
another uh, parameter that's important for image acquisition. The shutter type. So that's again, global rolling. It's uh, more of an advanced topic. I won't get into it here. Come to my next webinar. We're going to go into the details of image acquisition. Then sensor size, that's also very important. It's not about resolution. It's also about the sensor size. How big is the sensor in the electronics? And then the last one is quantum efficiency, which is how efficient is it? Because a camera, what does it do? It converts light energy into electronic energy, right? Um, the photons to electrons. And so how efficiently is it doing that conversion is known as the quantum efficiency. So that goes into how your camera fundamentals is. So, you know, I just put this single infographic which talks about this whole vision image acquisition system. You know, you have on one hand, you have, you know, this automation, which we talked about. Uh, you have this pre-process automation, which is um, the material handling. Then, you know, you talk about image acquisition. In image acquisition, you have, you know, the first thing is the trigger. Then you have the camera. Then in camera, you have the camera type, the resolution, frame rate, shutter type, sensor size, quantum efficiency. Then there's optics. In optics, you have, you know, different parameters like working distance, field of view, camera pixel size, resolution, depth of field. Then you have Ill illumination. In illumination, you have different kinds of illumination, the structure of the light, wavelength of light, the color of the light, LED, um, you know, intensity. So all that is in the illumination. So all this is important for image acquisition. And then you go into image processing, which is once you've acquired the image, what is the, uh, the approach to actually solving um, the uh, image acquisition system? And that's, you know, heuristics and AI based algorithms. So, so this is like a, a, a single, you know, um, what do you call infographic about the different parts of a machine vision system. So if, if you want this, please send an email, um, you know, replying to the, uh, the email invite that you got and we'll be happy to send this to you. So it's a good reference, which you can just look at. So when you're designing these systems, it gives you like a reference guide to say, okay, which part of it have I considered or not considered? Right. So send us an email and we can send you this infographic uh, to your email. Right. So I covered quite a bit. So I'm going to stop here for another small break and answer questions. So any questions, please type it out into our. Questions, questions. OK, um, let's see. I think there were some questions, but since I had um, a network outage, I've lost those. But if you could type this out again. So what is the different types of hardware and software requirement for machine vision systems? So Pankaj is asking different types of hardware and software requirement. Now, so as I said, Pankaj, there are different parts of a machine vision system, right? So here, you know, this, this slide in front of you. So when you talk about hardware, there's really two aspects of the hardware, which is the material handling, which is the automation. So that's a different set of hardware requirements. And then there's the image acquisition, right? In the image acquisition, you have, as I told you, the camera, the optics, the illumination, all that is your hardware. And then you have image processing. In image processing, you have, again, have two parts to it. You have the PC or the computer. So the image processing hardware and the image processing software, right? So again, the different types of uh, hardware and image processing is you can have you know, PC-based systems, embedded systems, and then in the software, you could have machine learning-based and rule-based, right? Um, is a determination, Krishna Chaitanya, is a determination of combination required for a good system for a particular application done by trial and error, or is there a sequential logic? Okay, great question, right? So, so when you design systems, is it actually done by trial and error or is it done by some uh, specific design? So um, Krishna, that's an excellent question. Now I would say there's two parts to this. There is the, um, you know, when, when you talk about three, I remember I talked about the three different parts. Let me go back to that slide. Uh, this is a really good question. I want to sp spend some time on this. Um, 
let me go back to the part where I talked about the different parts of a machine vision system. Right? So. Yeah, this one. So we talked about the material handling automation, the image acquisition, and then the image processing, right? Now, the science of machine vision today and the maturity of machine vision is such that the first two aspects of it, the material handling and the image acquisition is actually pure science and design. You don't need to do trial and error for this, right? So if you have a, if you have a specific um, a requirement when you want to do the inspection, you can actually design a system based on certain parameters, like what is the minimum defect size? How fast is it moving? How is it being oriented in front of your camera? At what angle do you need to project this image to be able to see the defect very clearly? So I would not say it's 100% theory, but I would say a large majority, 90% of it can be designed and it need not be much of a trial and error, right? But the last part of it, the image processing is where you need to experiment. You need to experiment with different algorithms. You need to experiment with, you know, uh, by training. If you're using AI-based systems, you got to train, retrain, retrain multiple times. And that's where, you know, you can't get a system all at once in the beginning and and it, and it gives you the accuracy you need out of the box, right? So it's the third part where there is a little bit of trial and error or there's not a little bit, quite a bit of trial and error. But in the first two aspects of it, the, uh, the design, a well-designed system should be able to take care of 90% of your requirements, right? So, and this is the point I'm trying to make in terms of why you need to break the solution down into different aspects. Because we sometimes, because we don't understand the different parts, we just come, we look at it as a whole black box, as a complete turnkey. And we say, yeah, I just want the system. Now, because of the image processing, there is some element of trial and you're not seeing the results. And then you're, you know, you're looking at, oh, this whole machine vision doesn't work. You're seeing this failure, right? But if you break it down and you get your material handling right, you get your image acquisition right, 70% of your problem is solved. It's just the image processing where you need to do some kind of a, uh, a trial and error, right? So, um, so that doesn't mean your entire system doesn't work, right? So that's how you need to be thinking about it. So it's a good question. Thanks, Chaitanya. Great, Krishna. So what, what else? Uh, before we go into image processing, which is a third part of any other questions. Um, how can we collect data from PLC and save to SQL database? Okay, so this is not exactly a machine vision system, but um, yeah, this is more, you know, PLC today, it's a communication standard. Like you have many uh, communication standards. Uh, OPC is a very common one, um, which is open. I think it's called open process communication, if I'm not, OPC UA, right? Um, you have various industrial communication, Profinet, Modbus, depending on which, what the PLC is. And then from there, your PC software can communicate with the PLC, retrieve that information and save it to a SQL database, right? So it's, it comes to more in terms of uh, PLC and control systems programming, not quite related to machine vision, but that's, you know, how you would uh, save that. Now, Rajoy Adayev asks, uh, Billy asks, does it find any crack sizes and depth of the crack also for casting and machining applications? Uh, yes, you can use machine vision for this, absolutely. So this is common application of machine vision. Okay. Um, so Praveen is asking, uh, is quantum efficiency and baud rate the same parameter? Praveen, no, quantum efficiency and baud rate are different. Baud rate is the speed at which 
it transfers data from the camera to the frame grabber, which is the PC. It's how fast is it transmission? Quantum efficiency is how efficiently is it converting light information to electronic information? So it's the energy conversion because camera, what does it do? It, it sensors, there, there's photo sensors, right? So it's a CMOS sensor. So it takes light that hits the photoelectric sensors and it takes that light energy is then converted to pixel energy or pixel information, which is electronic information. So they're two different things. Now, has there been any instances where, where machine vision with deep learning has resulted over a period of time, resulted in improving the area of application as in the system learns and starts giving suggestions to improve the process itself. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, um, with deep learning, um, I would say, you know, there's really three sort of levels of uh, advanced UI. One is, you know, the detection of defects, right? It's a detection of defects. The second one is, uh, so you have a defect, you use AI and deep learning and you detect that it's happened. The second is being able to um, predict the defect from happening, right? So before it actually happens is to be able to predict that it's gonna happen based on certain information that it comes. I would say in practical scenarios, today's deep learning applications aren't really mature enough to predict defects. It can identify it, but it can't actually predict it from happening using, I'm talking about machine vision, but there are other deep learning aspects using sound information and sensor information, right? Time series data, sensor information, which can predict machine breakdown, which is in predictive maintenance. So that's also very um, emerging technology, but um, machine vision today in its maturity is not, I would say, advanced enough to be able to predict these defects, which it's catching today. And Shivaram and Dr. Shiv, for MSMEs, the cost of implementation is a factor. Is there any cloud-based technology available? Um, yeah, well, uh, you know, like our, our product, for instance, is using cloud heavily to for training. So we use a, a hybrid approach. So with AI and deep learning, training and training hardware is very expensive, as you rightly said. So we use the cloud. So we only use it when you need to train instead of buying expensive system, keeping it in your uh, premises for, you know, maybe being used 10% of the time. So it's not just for MS MSME, Dr. Shivaraman, it's also for advanced, you know, in fact, the larger the company, the more sensitive they are to cost. So, you know, because they do it at scale. So a small percentage cost reduction results in massive savings across. So cost is always a factor. So we try to do things very cost effectively, right? Okay. So I'll take one more question and we can move on. Can machine vision be used in detecting sheet metal panel dents or defects used in car panels? Yes, of course it can be. But again, here, think about material handling, <clears throat> right? So when you talk about complex car bodies, you know, you have, you need to ensure how can you acquire images to look at the entire car body. So there's a material handling and image acquisition part. Once you, if you figured out that all three parts of it have to be considered to solve your application, right? So, but it is possible, definitely possible. Okay. So let's move into the third aspect of image processing, which is a uh, third aspect, third part of the machine vision components, which is image processing. So this is now you've captured the image, analyzing the acquired images for the desired results, right? So this is a software part. Now here there's two parts of image processing. There's the hardware and the software. So, you know, the computational hardware and the image processing software. Now in computational hardware, there's two types. There's PC, external PC. So in other words, here you have cameras which are just taking images 
and then transferring the, cap the images to the PC and the software on the PC is doing the processing. So it's called PC-based systems. And then there's embedded or smart camera-based systems, which it's the camera and the um, processing unit is combined, right? And uh, so, you know, there's uh, pros and cons for everything. Um, not going to go into the details. This is just an introduction about this. I want to cover some of the other uh, good aspects of digital transformation in, in my next slides. But um, if you have any questions, uh, please type it on in your chat window. I'll be able to, I'm happy to answer these. But these are roughly got to understand this PC based systems, which are more, you know, powerful kind of uh, for applications, complex applications, multi camera applications. And then you have smart camera systems, which is kind of uh, more typically used for simpler applications and where a single camera is required, right? So those are the two types. So that's the hardware part. Now the software part, there are two aspects or two types of approaches to solving uh, the software-based, uh, one is the rule-based approach and there's a machine learning-based approach is, you know, using programmatic rules, which are, you know, um, well defined in. Uh, so basically, the learning is done by the program. The teacher is, teaching is done by the program programmer. So the programmer teaches the system based on rules and programs. The machine learning, the machine learns by itself. That's artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning uses this kind of approach. Again, not going to go into details. There's a webinar, a very detailed webinar that we talk about. You know, deep learning based machine vision systems. So do check that out. Uh, you can go to our website or our YouTube channel. There's a bunch of videos, at least, you know, plus videos on, on all of these topics. So you can go into the details about this. But basically two software approaches to how you can teach your system to program or to program your system to inspect or to predict um, defects or any kind of uh, do the analysis on images that you've acquired. Okay, so we covered the three main aspects of it, right? So the three main aspects, just to recap, material handling, making sure that you're consistently moving material in front of the camera. There's capturing the images, which is image acquisition, right? So for that, we talked about, you know, using the right camera, optics, light, lenses, you know, all that is goes into the image acquisition. And then the last part is software, which is image processing, right? So now, um, now let's talk about, you know, how do we put all this together and how do we actually um, begin your journey into automating a machine vision task, right? So this is where, you know, this digital transformation comes in. Now, now we've, if, if I'm sure in your organization, you've done a lot of digital transformation programs, right? But I'm sure it all starts with your IT department, right? You must have heard your in the CIO office or the IT department is doing this digital transformation program using your MES systems, your ERP systems. And the main reason why it starts there is that you already have digital data, right? So you already have a lot of digitized information present in your MES systems or your quality management system or your ERP systems. And you're looking at how do we then use technologies like AI, et cetera, to transform or to gain some valuable insights or to automate something in your assembly line or in, in your production uh, uh, organization. Now, why don't we do the same with the shop floor, right? Why can't we? do digital transformation programs in shop floor. Anybody, right? Why is, you know, why is it only in the IT department? Why can't we do this in the shop floor? What is limiting you from, uh, what is the limiting factor that you have? Right? Um, well, the limiting factor is digital data. You can't transform something 
you can't do digital transformation when the digital the digitization itself has not happened yes or no right you need information if you like date artificial intelligence is heavily the fuel what is the fuel for ai and machine learning and deep learning what is the fuel any guesses that's right it's data right is digital data now without digital data you can't do any kind of artificial intelligence and machine machine learning or transformation etc so when you talk about machine vision and using ai for machine vision what is data for machine vision what is the fuel for machine vision anyone that's right pankaj it's images right the fuel for machine vision in ai is images now now a lot of times if you go buy a car you know an automotive enthusiast now if you have to manufacture a special fuel and build a car and give you a solution which from one supplier that gives you fuel as well as a car i mean you're you're never going to build the perfect car right so then because there there are actually two different expertise technologies and steps on one hand you have the fuel and then you have you know the automotive itself which you know so that you have companies like shell etc and and special processes to generate and manufacture fuel and then you have the automotive industry which is using that fuel to drive automation i'm using a very extreme example but just bear with me with this analogy right so and a lot of times we are sort of thinking about this magic of digital transformation in the same way that you know it's like looking for an automotive vendor who is providing both the fuel as well as the car as a solution it's it's practically not going to be very viable and scalable right so what if you think about the two aspects separately what if you say i'm going to go first digitize get images and i'm going to collect all this valuable information which is the data and then i'm going to go and look for for a transformation technology or ai technology to help um uh, crunch this data to process this data and come up with advanced insights analytics on this data right now what if you thought about it in this way wouldn't that be you know quite an efficient or a you know would bring down the complexity of the journey towards digital transformation because you're breaking down the entire transformation journey into smaller steps right so what if you take it a step further back and then say now before i do image acquisition let me make sure that my automation is supporting this whole transformation of my process of this automation what if i first go and do a small project in my material handling or in my assembly line to do maybe like that example of the capsule right it's moving and you are providing some automation so that you are exposing the part or you are localizing the part or you are making it easy for a camera to take images what if you actually broke it down and then in that first step and then you move to the next step which is image acquisition then you say now i'm going to go look at how do i capture the right images so that all my surfaces or all uh, whatever i need to inspect is being captured as images and you take that up as a second project right and then you capture the data and then you have this wealth of information you have it in the form of images you know actual production images 
which you would then be applying software to. And then you can go to a lot of, you know, you can work with image processing specialists. Now you have today, image processing is become a commodity. Eight year olds and 10 year olds are building AI today. I'm not, I'm not joking. 10 year olds are building advanced convolutional neural networks, which does cutting edge stuff. It's four lines of code to build a neural network using Python and GitHub. The technology is just transforming itself. In fact, you don't even need to know coding to do AI. When you have such powerful and simple technology, right? Why are we not using it to our advantage? It's because we think of this entire solution as one. And we say, you know, oh, I want this one guy to do this pre-process automation. I want this image acquisition. I want this image processing. I want this black box solution. Well, when you have eight year olds doing image processing, it's so simple. Now, he has to, if you want a solution from him, you need a guy who knows image acquisition, you need material handling, robotics, and image processing. This all in one skill set from one single vendor. Well, not going to happen, right? Or it's going to be very expensive. Instead, if you go to a, a pre processor or a, a material handling guy, there's a ton of low cost automation providers today. And you can say, go build me this mechanism that just separates out this part for me. So, you know, a camera can easily take a picture. Now, you're going to get tens of um, low cost automation providers who can do that simple aspect. Now, if you ask him, okay, go to build an AI algorithm, he's going to, you know, he's going to get a heart attack. He's, he's never heard of AI before, right? He's been doing this 20 years doing, you know, he's an expert of PLCs and motion control and maybe even robots, but he can do that easy pre-process automation material handling very easily. Now, even image acquisition is not too difficult. You can get, uh, you know, if you educate yourself about what are the different camera types, you can just go make a small uh, prototype of ha having cameras installed and, you know, to be able to capture. And you can also get suppliers who are experts with, who can help you with only image acquisition, right? And then, you get enough data, the fuel, you're collecting the fuel and you're putting it in tankers, right? And that's why AI comes in now. So why is digital transformation happening at the IT end is because you have years and years of manufacturing data that you can go back, refer to, mine that, run AI algorithms and to be able to come up with insights. And you expect machine vision, for instance, to happen or do all that overnight. How It won't happen, right? So if you collect this information now, Today, if you do this, take that first step today, in a year from now, you're gonna have enough of wealth of information that you can use to maybe even get a 10 year old intern to give him that information and say, now build me an algorithm that can automate this inspection. I'm not kidding, you might be able to succeed in that with that 10 year old, right? So that's the, roadmap I wanted to you know highlight and impress impress upon you and you know and but why doesn't it happen so again going back to why doesn't digital transformation happen using machine vision let's look at it from another angle what are the common mistakes that we see right we've seen we've done hundreds of different uh, applications we've talked to thousands of different people when we say machine vision everyone gets excited they say they all want to automate when you say you want to do low cost automation, you want to reduce pe people from the shop floor, you want to eliminate manpower or reduce manpower. Everyone is talking about it. Everyone has that on the priority. And as I said, there's only two aspects or two functions that a manpower does. Assembly, machine tending, material handling and inspection. So this is handled by robotics automation. This is handled by machine vision. So if you do both, you can in theory replace all manpower on the shop floor. Correct? But why isn't machine vision gaining that much traction? Why is it still so complex? Is because we are doing some, a few things wrong. 
And what are those few things that we're doing wrong, right? There are five common mistakes that I, we, we see from these discussions and what we've seen um, in, the, in, the, in the industry. Mistake number one is, is trying to do it all at once. And I talked about it, right? So you want, you have this inspection task, you're manufacturing something, and today you are getting, you know, zero defects in your processing, in your inspection process. Now you want all of a sudden a machine to come and then do all that that you're doing today. Now you try it, you get on guy, he gives you a demo, you do it, you know, he shows you something in the shop floor, you go see it, gives you a quote, five, 10 lakhs, whatever it is, you deploy it. It looks great on theory paper in the lab, in the POC, but in the production, big flaw. You're getting so many false positives, false rejections. You're not getting the accuracy that you want because you're trying replace all of it at once. But instead, if you go back and then say, let me take this step by step. First, I handle material handling. I make sure that my material handling is covered. Now it's localizing the parts. It's present. It's, it's showing the parts in a, in a organized way. So that is, that is, you know, taken care of. Now let, then let me do image acquisition. I just collect data. Now, once I collect data, I can do these uh, testing uh, offline. I don't need to do it on the assembly line in real time. I can do it you know, on computers and see a report. And then I can see from the report whether this approach, I can give it to two vendors or I can give it to two interns or whoever. And then I can choose the best solution and say, this approach works the best. And then go and put it into your production line. Now, if you follow that step-by-step, step, I guarantee you, you will arrive at a solution. Mistake number two is having unclear and unachievable objectives. Now, this kind of goes back to the first point is you want 100% um, you know, in 100 accuracy. You want this to be done at um, let us remove the pointer. Yeah, so you're trying to. Um, so today you're doing sampling, let's say, but now all of a sudden you're investing in a machine, but you want 100% accuracy. You want all kinds of defects, micron level defects. If it, it's it's also going to be, you know, um, hard to achieve such unattainable objectives. So, so break it down, have specific objectives, but also make it simple so that you can you know, get to your um, objectives faster. Number three, I see not educating yourself about the technology, right? So the fact that you're here today is, is clearly shows that you're here to learn, you're here to learn from others' experiences, you're educating yourself, trying to understand about the technology. I hope you've taken away something that you can apply when you go and solve these in your assembly lines, right? So if you, um, uh, so, so this is a common mistake that we see. So go take seminars, understand how, you know, things work about image acquisition, what is image processing, etc. Now, uh, and the last mistake is, is not having dedicated resource or team in this transformation. So being too dependent on vendors or underestimating the work required so that, you know, you're not fully involved in your uh, project. And so what happens is the first time you do this, it all, almost often takes two X the time. And you wanna make sure that, you know, you have enough resources and, and time so that you are uh, successful. So these are the five things that we see quite often. So what, what is a roadmap, right? So when, when you look at how should you undertake this transformation journey, the first step is in this journey is really learning, is, is attending, you know, educational webinars like you're doing now, doing training programs, maybe even, you know, looking at um, getting paid training programs for your education. Now, this, is, this can save you tons and tons. This is an investment that can save you tons and tons of mistakes later. So learning is key. Knowledge is king, right? The second is problem definition. Now, once you've uh, learned, you know enough about the technology is identifying the right problem to solve, to automate. Right? So if you know the right problem, you define the clear objectives and you identify the right partners for different aspects of it, 
you, you will be knowledgeable enough to know what exactly you want from your material handling automation and exactly what you need from your machine vision and machine vision acquisition and machine vision processing uh, vendors if they're different, right? So that's the problem definition. The third is that as I talked about going about the digitization of data. So implement the material handling, implement the digitization and then collect data. And then lastly, you do the image processing. Right? So go step by step and solve each one. And then the image processing, because today's technology is very different from tomorrow. The first material handling, all that you know, is probably five years old, is still latest, is still cutting edge. But when it comes to image processing, it's changing every month, every week is changing. The algorithms and technology when it comes to AI and deep learning, we, we are in the speed and we, we wake up and overnight technology has changed. So. You, you want to separate this out, collect your data, and tomorrow's technology, the investments you've made in the first three of digitization, image acquisition will pay off because you can easily replace technology. It will never be outdated, the software technology that is. But your image acquisition will never get outdated because that stuff you know, is, is less dynamic. And lastly, then you can do full automation. Then you integrate it with your image acquisition system. You uh, integrate it with rejection system, whatever else you want to do. And then you can do root cause analysis, you know, post process of, uh, analysis, things like that. So here's the roadmap that, you know, I would say works quite uh, well. We've seen this working with large enterprises. We're working with, you know, um, uh, companies in Europe following this prescription. And that's how they've been uh, undertaking the journey. And it's just that in India, it's just gaining traction and people are still learning the way the transformative roadmap of how they should go about the machine vision uh, projects. So in summary, what it, we covered a lot of material. We covered a lot of material. So let me summarize this real quick, right? So automation is key to our competitiveness. So we talked about why we need to automate to stay competitive. There are two things to automate, material handling assembly and inspection and using machine vision. We talked about the parts of a machine vision. The material handling, digitization, which is image acquisition, then decision making, which is image processing. We talked about the five common mistakes. And then we talked about the roadmap of how you can take this transformation journey. And so Rome wasn't built in a day, but they were laying bricks every hour, right? So yes, you can't wait and expect Rome to be built in a day, but you can start laying your bricks, which is you know this foundation for you know your transformation. And then break down the journey and see success in the end, right? So you're, you're going to be doing this things which may not see success, but you will see progress. So it's not about success, it's about progress. All right. So in that note, I'm very excited to be sharing with you also the launch of Qualitas Academy. So we have seen a number of requests coming in from customers in educating themselves about what is machine vision, you know, webinars like these free webinars, we do quite a bit, but then, you know, um, we've, we've been asked to do paid engagements to go a little bit deeper into some of these topics. And we are very happy to launch this as a formal program as Qualitas Academy. And, you know, the syllabus mainly covers a number of things. It covers machine vision fundamentals, right? Basics of machine vision, image acquisition. Some of this I talked about today but we go very in depth into all those different aspects, all the way to what is deep learning, what is AI, what's the difference? How do you, you know, uh, go about an AI, uh, take, take up an AI application? We talk about material handling. Then, you know, we go into fundamentals of image acquisition, image processing, how to implement the very practical steps of implementation, as well as, you know, after you implement, how do you maintain your system, the post implementation steps, and then you know the also these uh, the processes that we follow requirement analysis. So there's really you know how we do business requirement analysis. So you as a project engineer in your company, you want to you want to take this to management and really show justification of investments. I can give you a guaranteed formula that you apply this, and no executive or management will say no to this project when you show them clear ROI. At the end of the day, money talks, right? It needs to be about ROI. So we have this framework that we've used which can you know, break down your um, ROI in terms of the investments. 
And then also, you know, how do you define specifications so that you can clearly unambiguously communicate to vendors about what you want, right? And in terms of training objectives that we cover, it's the basics is to gain introduction to the technology and then to be able to identify applicability of machine vision. So you need to know enough to say that, okay, this problem can be solved with machine vision or not. Then we go into concepts, the concepts of technology choices. What is line scan cameras? What is area scan cameras? What is 3D? When is when do you use 3D versus 2D? Then how do you define requirements? So create sound and relevant requirement specifications. And then how do you evaluate not just the technology, but how do you evaluate vendors? Right? And then how do you define our ROI to the success? So those are the training objectives that you would get out of it. And so with this, I'd like to end my webinar. I would like to thank you for uh, listening, spending your valuable evening. I hope you took away uh, something of value that you learned from, which you can go and apply. If you're interested in the Qualitas Academy, what we have to offer, I'd be very interested in um, talking to you about your organization. We do like a three-day webinar is what we've launched, but we're also looking at specialized modules in AI and 3D especially. And we'd be very excited to be working with you if you have this uh, requirement from, from your side. So, uh, so with this, I'd like to wrap up the a formal agenda and also you know do um, let your colleagues and others know about Qualitas Academy we're, we're really looking forward to spreading this knowledge about machine vision and seeing how you can benefit from this great technology and learning is key thank you thanks everyone